Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia's Honorable Dominic Fede is named the Caribbean's Tourism Minister of the Year. These stakeholders in the agriculture sector urge to change their business models to realize success. A more than $2 million water project is in the pipeline at Viesequi. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Offering. St. Lucia's winning streak in the highly competitive tourism industry continues with Minister Honorable Dominic Fede being named the Caribbean Tourism Minister for 2019. Honorable Fede's stewardship has been recognized by the Caribbean Journal Caribbean Travel Awards. Minister Fede is also being lauded for his leadership as chairman of the Caribbean Tourism Organization, the CTO. More now from Janelle Norvell. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, has been, among other things, overseeing the training of various subsectors in the tourism industry, enabling St. Lucia to continue on a path of growth. His dedication and commitment to growing St. Lucia's tourism industry have not gone unnoticed as he has been named under the Caribbean Travel Awards as Caribbean Tourism Minister for the Year. The minister is described as having helped steward a destination that is one of the hottest in the Caribbean and has become a haven for high-profile investment from Cabot's highly anticipated gold resort at the northern tip of the island to a major new cruise destination in the south. Honorable Fede was also commended for serving exemplary as chair of the Caribbean Tourism Organization and for doing an outstanding job as an ambassador for Caribbean tourism as a whole. The minister expressed gratitude for the recognition. I'm just really humbled by the whole thing. Uh, I, I just want to thank Caribbean Journal for uh, recognizing the outstanding work that my team have been doing. I think it's a testament of the work that an entire industry of people are doing. All 20,000 tourism and hospitality workers, that's their award. I would like to dedicate it to them because uh, they show up every day and they work hard and they are the ones who meet the guests and they're the ones that ensure that St. Lucia's repetition is number one. So the award really belongs to them. Editor and publisher of the Caribbean Journal, Alexander Brittle, indicated that the sixth edition of the Caribbean Travel Awards honored hotels, destinations, experiences, and most importantly, the people that make the Caribbean the greatest travel destination on the earth. Minister Fede highlighted a number of projects in the pipeline and some soon to come on stream. We are over 1.2 million uh, visits a year in all of the different components of tourism. So the goal is to get that to around two and a half million. Uh, that is where we're trying to get, but most importantly is to yield as much as we can from the most profitable uh, aspect of the industry, which, are, which is the land-based side. So we're, 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 we've got over 2,000 rooms right now that are in the pipeline for development over the next uh, seven to 10 years. And if, if this all comes true, it means that St. Lucia would have some exciting brands. Uh, we are breaking ground very soon in the Hyatt. Um, we have just uh, broke ground on a new golf course and on Cabot Lodges as well. And uh, we're seeing uh, a lot of investors are planning for development. This year's Caribbean Travel Awards included winners across 21 categories, selected by Caribbean Journal's editorial staff and its network of contributors. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norvell. Agriculture Minister Honorable Ezekiel Joseph has underscored the need for key partners in the banana export ring to augment their strategies to increase the amount of bananas exported to the United Kingdom. We hear more about this recent development from the Agriculture Ministry's Amanda Faye Clark. Representatives of Winfresh, the National Fair Trade Organization, the NFTO, and the Banana Productivity Improvement Project, the BPIP, met with ministry leaders to identify what issues continue to plague the banana industry and to discuss on possible solutions which could result in increased banana sales over the next four months. Chief Executive Officer of Winfresh, Bernard Cornibut, says the time has come for open, honest dialogue among partners in order that the industry and farmers reap the rewards of their investments. Time 
and financing in an already competitive banana market. It is an industry that is not entirely competitive and it probably will never be very competitive in the sense that um, the industry is competing against some, and we have said so before, some very, very large players. It is a real big ocean that we are swimming in with this banana industry. But that does not mean it, can, it cannot survive. Okay? And so we need to look at it critically, all of us, with a, a positive mind, which says we want to do something to make it work. Agriculture Minister Honorable Ezekiel Joseph reiterated the concerns of the Prime Minister and that of many administrators of the ministry, which are opportunities not being capitalized upon because of the manner in which the business of marketing our bananas are being handled. I can say that we are not happy as to the figures we are seeing as it pertains to the exports so far for 2019 to the UK market. We are not happy. And I remember telling Mr. Severe and Mr. Fontinat is there that I recall when Mr. Fontinat was in a position to provide the information, I used to get weekly information as to the exports. When time Mr. Fontinat left, I have not been able to get it. I've been requesting this ever so often. And as the ministry, we are not getting that information. Commitments and promises have been made, we're not getting it. But of course, that information is important for us, and I say as the ministry, to be able to monitor what's happening on the ground. And for us to intervene, one, we believe is appropriate. So I am to believe that the mere fact that we're not getting the information is that everything seems to be okay. And we can only, we can only get involved because I've been told on many occasions, I mean, marketing is not your business, it's not the ministry's business. It's between Winfresh and NFTO. But when the fan hit the roof, <laughs> they called to the ministry for, 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 for some intervention. And I've said before, it's not after it, the horse has been bolted to call the Ministry for Intervention. I need to get weekly information. Minister Joseph insists that there must be a swift turnover on the part of all parties. Otherwise, alternative actions will be sought to enable Sinusian Bananas to increase market share in the UK. Winfresh is telling me that they're making, how you call it, weekly... Purchase order. Hmm? Purchase order. Weekly purchase order. NFTO is not meeting the weekly purchase order. We know they have banners on the ground. We know that. So why is it that our farmers cannot sell the bananas? Why is it that the figures that we have seen for this year is going to be less than, than next year? So moving forward, I want to make it clear that if the St. Lucia government is going to be involved in, in Winfresh, as far as my premise is concerned, we must see a significant, and I say this word deliberate, there's significant improvement in the marketing of our banners. If not, we have to look at options. The agriculture minister is focused heavily on restoring the banana industry on firm footing, restoring a subsector that was once seen as the gem of the Caribbean. From the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Fay Clark reporting. A more than $2 million water project is in the pipeline for residents of Yesiqui. The St. Lucia Social Development Fund, SSDF, has signed the agreement under the ninth cycle of the Basic Needs Trust Fund for the commencement of the project. More from Chevroy Marius. The St. Lucia Social Development Fund and water and sewage company Wasco have signed an agreement to increase the availability of pipeline water to the Yesiqui community. The agreement was signed at the Water and Sewage Company's administrative building on Wednesday, December 11, 2019. The Vesikwe Water Supply Extension Project is funded by the Caribbean Development Bank under the ninth cycle of the Basic Needs Trust Fund, BNTF9. The project is intended to channel portable water to households in the Vesikwe community. Executive Director of the Social Development Fund, Alison Mafre, provided insight on the different problems that VCQA residents have encountered over the years. 
The government of St. Lucia and the Caribbean Development Bank have come together with WASCO um, to provide the water to this facility. And um, we are all excited and we look forward to when the residents actually have water running to their homes. Over the years, residents of Visiqui had to resort to rainwater harvesting, which in and of itself is not bad. We should always, we should all invo um, get involved with rainwater harvesting for environmental reasons. Um, they also had to rely on the community pond, and that comes with its own issues because, of course, there is vulnerability to, the, to disease because they're not using pro um, purified water, especially for children. Many residents had to purchase drinking water and even have to truck water during the dry seasons. The facility will be constructed at an estimated cost of EC $2.1 million. Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment and Parliamentary Representative for Grizzly, Honorable Leonard Montoot, expressed relief on behalf of the residents who to date have experienced limited access to pipe-borne water. I want to express my sincere gratitude on behalf of my constituents and on behalf of the government of St. Lucia to the Caribbean Development Bank who are providing pretty close to half of the resources needed for this program. And I'm sure that the people, the residents of Viesiqui will be eternally grateful for that improvement in their lives. Over a hundred residents will be affected about 45 households will be impacted, and that, I think, is significant. And uh, most of all, you, you were told, too, that there was the use of a major community pond where many residents relied on the source of water, for the source of water. And that in itself, as you have heard, was causing its fair share of problems, especially among children, because we had cases of waterborne diseases as a result of the use of the water from the pond. So these will be a thing of the past, and I'm happy to know that we will not only be making life easier, but improving in many ways the lives and health of the people of that community. Clean, safe water is a privilege that is often taken for granted in developed countries, and one that is not always accessible in developing nations. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevroy Marius. The credit union movement in St. Lucia has taken a major step in its development. Over the last three years, the St. Lucia Cooperative Credit Union League Limited has been working with Capita Financial Services and their vendors to install automated telemachines, ATMs, in strategic locations around the island and develop the network infrastructure. The first phase of the project, an ATM service, will deliver on the demands of its members for secure, instant access to their funds 24 hours a day. Initially, four local credit unions will have access to the new Unicard, the Credit Union ATM card. President of the St. Lucia Cooperative Credit Union League Limited, Gilroy Satney, says initial participating credit unions include Chozelle, Labry, Monopo, and the Teachers Cooperative Credit Union, with four others to follow suit. Those ATMs are located strategically across the island at Schwizel office or Schwizel Credit Union in Schwizel, the Labry Credit Union in Viewfort, the Monrepo Credit Union in Monrepo, and the League's office in the William Peter Boulevard in Castries. Going forward, the remaining participating credit unions of Denry, Fossejac, Saltibus and hospitality will be coming on board. The implementation of the ATM service concludes the first phase of the League's collaboration with Capital Financial Services. President and CEO of Capital Financial Services, Paul Maxwell, says over the next few weeks, members will be issued ATM cards and begin enjoying the convenience of accessing their funds when needed. So before, if they only sent a small part of the earnings to the credit unions from the salaries, they can now consider lodging their full salaries because they will have access 24-7. Also, persons who always wanted to join the credit union but didn't because of the limited access can now join because obviously access is much wider. Research has shown and what we've seen in Barbados and certainly the research on the, the World Council of 
uh, Credit Union's website, has indicated that when access is given to a person's money, the person actually gives you more of their money to hold. Um, it is almost paradoxical, but it is true. If you have access 24 7, 365, you actually give that person more of your money to hold because it is not a problem when you need it back. The League will continue its collaboration with Capital Financial towards the swift implementation of the remaining phases of the project, namely online banking, mobile banking, point of sale access services, as well as global convenience with international debit and credit cards. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible. And remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome to another segment from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. News from the Winnet Islands Under-15 Cricket Tournament being played in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. St. Lucia going down by 73 runs on Tuesday to Dominica at Park Hill. Sent in, Dominica batting first got to 175 for 7 or 50 overs. Due mainly to an unbroken 7th wicket stand of 77 between Darren Toussaint, 61 not out, and Amiel Gilbert, 30 not out. Jason Vidal contributed 24. Bowling for St. Lucia. Darwin Ford picked up 3 for 38. And Jason Justin, 2 for 20. In reply, St. Lucia struggled to 102 all out of 39.4 overs. With the captain, Ken Elcock, being the standout batsman yet again, with a knock of 49, consisting 7 fours. Carlil St. Hill stroke 17. The wicket takers for Dominica were Hishon Vivil, 4 for 15, and Jelani Joseph, 3 for 15. St. Lucia's final game Wednesday will be up against Grenada at Cumberland. With the third turning ceremony for the Miku playing field upgrade already taking place, the construction of a swimming pool as part of the upgrade will be a very crucial addition. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Benson Emil, spoke on the relevance of the inclusion of the swimming facility at Miku during the ceremony. And this facility can be used, you know, for exercise as well, especially for our, our elderly, you know, where jogging becomes difficult, you know, and, and those high impact sports become very difficult. If you're in the swimming pool, you know, it is less strain on your joints and it could facilitate, you know, a lot more comfortable exercise. So that is the reason why this swimming pool is one of the first being erected outside of the north. The plan is to have one erected in the, in the, on the western side of the island, which is Sufre, and for us to have a 50 meter aquatic center in the north of the island to facilitate us hosting regional and international swim events. The upgrade of the Miku Plain Field is part of government's sporting infrastructure development program. And that's our segment from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has made a donation ahead of the holiday season to Comfort Bay Center. The details in this report. On Thursday, December 5, 2019, the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints handed over supplies to beneficiaries of the Comfort Bay Center for the Elderly. The ceremony was held at the Comfort Bay facility VF Fall. Elder David Nish is the representative of the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints. As part of our donation towards the community, we are very happy to 
hand over this equipment to Comfort Bay, which is extremely well run. The donation consisted of 14 mattresses, a large refrigerator, blood pressure kits, diabetes kits, and two long tables. According to head nurse Elisha Prince, the initiative was well received. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints for the invaluable contribution. It was a much-needed gesture for our facility. And I'd like to thank you, Sister Boggs, Brother Boggs, Sister Nish, Brother Nish, for facilitating such. For members of the church, the greatest commandment is to love God with all their heart. And the second is to love others as they love themselves. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevre Marius. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. I was in my neighborhood. It was a very dark night and I decided to go for a drink by a bar. On my way from the bar, I felt this thing to my right leg. And when I look back, I knew it was a, a, a full snake. If you happen to be in an area where there are snakes and you are bitten by a snake, this is what you do. You call for help and try to reach the Victoria Hospital within one or three hours. You will be seen immediately. My uncle at the time was a police officer, called VA, um, Victoria Hospital and told them that we can be known for snake bite. It is the only facility on the island which has a protocol and a treatment plan where you can be treated adequately. We call them before you go there so they can prepare for you. And rest assured that there are adequate supplies of antivenom with doctors who have been trained in the treatment protocols of the snake bite. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur, Madame, Département, Kenny West Coast Ability pour Information, and Gouvernement Sotlesi, GIS, Assemblée Pi Télévision Nationale, NTN, Capositro Nouvelle Arqueole. Presito, Primus Hutchinson. Pepe et Anchimé, pour vous suivre bonne occupation santé, pas de yon en visite de yon même. Ministère de Santé, j'ai commencé une initiative de l'examination pour connaître plus de dégâts santé moun en cette ici. Ça a fait un programme qui a porté nos un step. Le programme step, c'est si un côté les officiers de santé qui ont placé Kayakai au lieu pays là pour questionner et examiner les gens qui ont l'âge 18 ans pour 89 ans. Il y a une discussion à ce NTN. Il un chef officier de santé qui est responsable pour maladie qui n'a pas si mais à Tion pour l'autre. Ça, c'est Dr. Chanel C. Fulbert, déclaré qui, attention, c'est pour essayer de connaître des grues santé, c'est mon sala, et qui quantité sensible y est pour trouver maladie, compisadou, malche, pressure et problème en frissimolio. So, nous avons regardé ces um, risk factors pour ces maladies. Ça. Si nous avons regardé si nous avons fumé, comment est-ce que nous avons fait un chai ou un homme, qui est la quantité de sel que nous avons mangé ou qui um, est-ce que vous avez mangé fruit, est-ce que vous avez mangé fruit, est-ce que vous avez fait exercice, est-ce que vous avez fait, est-ce que vous avez assis, bah, quoi. Nous avons regardé ces bagages, puis nous avons regardé ces bagages, ces bagages, ça, là, qui fait mon plus joué de ces maladies, ça. Si nous voulons regarder comment est cette lycée, là, nous avons regardé maladie, quoi, et ces bagages, là, qui cause maladie, quoi. Donc, so, step sauver ça, il est important tout bonnement. Nos des affaires santé publique Almadola expliquait en façon que l'examination sera qu'il conduit. Plan, selon nos dollars, c'est pour établir une liste de 6400 personnes en pays. Nous ne savons pas qui est le monde, c'est un aspect de la manière dont nous avons pour choisir et que nous avons choisi ce qui est le cas. Nous avons eu un nom et un autre monde qui a posé des questions. Nous avons eu le cas. Nous avons eu le cas de la personne qui a posé 1800 pour 69 l'année et qui ont regardé, mettez ces noms à son anti-division et là ils ont fait ça, ils ont choisi yon moun à Kaila et là ils ont choisi yon moun là, nous avons encouragé yon moun ça pour faire répondre ces questions et pour pour prendre ces mesures, ils ont mesuré moins yo, pressure yo qui pèse yo, ils ont pèse yo. Mais si yon moun ça pas voulu faire, ils passent à faire l'autre comme à oui et ben c'est c'est pour faire, ils sont nous qui ont dit 
Les gens ont choisi à ces gens nous ont encouragé pour faire ça. Et là, nous avons des gens qui ne font pas ça. Quand ils sont bien malades de carbone, si mon a gros bout de bagage ça pour misia mais yo ça m'a des questions hein yo ça pour pêcher si mon a l'hôpital si mon a travaillé dans un cas pour grand monde c'est mon ça yo pas ça fait mais l'autre c'est mon qui qui mon en santé nous ça fait c'est mon ça eh ben nous ca pour tout plus information concernant programme santé step ça là à sur l'autre nouvelle Première phase développement projet pour huit bâtis grand la place Castui. J'ai à présent trouvé en bas ministère pour affaire développement économique. Présentation ça a été faite en finissement mois novembre en facilité à même par les maires Castui Peterson Francis. Établissement nouveau ça bâti en façon pour abattre cyclone qui a poussé vent plus fort qui descend lié par les états. Il aussi nécessité facilité pour aider ces ouvriers là ménager pour viser au plus meilleur. Facilité neuf ça là, car il y a aussi ni un centable qui a une capacité pour tuer n'importe provision qui se veut des là qui a une. Selon les maires français, les facilités facilité ça là commencé opération officiellement. Se veut des là qui à présent qui a utilisé vieux établissement les pompiers à sous la rue Jérémy, qui a trouvé yo des en facilité qui très avancé. Les maires français déclarent que la place pour les veut des très important pour un produit touristique qui a inspiré pour commencement opération facilité neuf sala côté ces rivières là qui au pourri à d'ailleurs l'environnement qui a embrassé toute façon qui confortable l'autre part de première phase là parce que projet sala qui a une diverse côté pour boire et manger qu'un restaurant place pour sa vente vient avec poisson établissement pour poser et pour garder belle ville là avec les boutiques pour acheter divers produits sans payer taxes Département des affaires construction qui a réfléchi, mais moi, public là, généralement, qui chez mes sorties Friendship Inn et Gouan tourné au choc, qui a resté fermé pour faciliter le travail 24 mètres de temps, comme il a placé le dernier goudon pour Gouan dit pour j'ai mon souci, mes sorties Bord Hotel Sandals Alcyon pour Gouan tourné à ce chemin au choc. Alors, il a fait les membres publics savent que chez mes pour Gosile, qui était une idée ligne pour l'auto naviger à présent qui a fait provision pour trafic ni monter avec des sons ça veut dire il y a une ligne chemin qui pour l'auto qui a monté façade gosilé par dans l'autre là qui a facilité l'auto qui a descendre castui ce changement ça là qui est resté en opération juste un public là trouver information des changements alors il a conseillé les chauffeurs l'auto pour prendre bonne précaution et pour espérer qu'il la qui a ni problème de vita ministère a aussi conseillé les chauffeurs pour servir l'autre route qui avait là par exemple Mondido pour Balata et la pensée pour Carly pour Union etc. Mais c'est un espoir qui depuis tant permet que compagnie Sir William se pose fini placer complètement dernier goudon en ces jours qui va venir et pour commencer marcher mais aussi mais ça là c'est maintenant département des affaires construction après grande apologie pour tout huita qui public là c'est ainsi et car oui merci pour patience et bonne compagnie et c'est comme ça nous retrouvons cette nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour votre invitation. Pour que vous vous considérez que vous avez la vie. Vous avez besoin de vous retrouver cette nouvelle à Kouyol. Après ça, je vous remercie pour votre nouvelle. Merci au Pile Primus. Et ici, regardez ce qui se passe à nous, weather-wise. Faire tout à l'heure de la pluie et de la pluie, occasionnellement de la pluie, avec des pluies de pluie de pluie. An Atlantic high pressure system will continue to generate brisk easterly winds and rough seas across our region during the next few days. Low level clouds drifting with the easterly wind flow will cause occasional cloudiness and showers over the eastern Caribbean islands during the next 24 hours. Tides for Castries Harbor low at 1.03 pm, high at 7.33 pm. Tides for Viewford Bay Low at 2.30 p.m., high at 8.40 p.m. Seas, locally rough with waves and northerly to northeasterly swells, 7 to 11 feet or 2.1 to 3.4 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise extreme caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The sun will rise Wednesday at 6.21 a.m.
And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.